Hello, my beautiful babies. Today on the show, we're talking about Loki. It's about time. Get it? Show's about time. So I've been really excited to watch Loki, especially after WandaVision. Did you watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier? No, I totally skipped it because that falls in like jock Marvel, which I'm not really here for. I'm all about magicians and like cosmic shit. So I'm here for the weirdo Marvel stuff. What about the Black Widow movie? Well, I did see Black Widow, but that does fall in jock Marvel category. Oh, what'd you think about it, Mom? I thought it was just okay. I mean, it's a little too late, honestly. They should have done this way sooner. And uh, I did enjoy Florence Pugh and Dave Harbour, though. They were fantastic in it. I loved them so much. They were really funny. But man, they totally fucked up Taskmaster. I was just like, oh no, in the theater. It was such a bummer. But the most interesting thing about the Black Widow movie for me is the lawsuit that Scarlett Johansson has brought against Disney for breach of contract. I think she's totally in the right here. Get money. Spoiler alert! Loki is a six episode series centering on the Loki that got away using the fumbled Tesseract during the Avengers time traveling heistcapades in Endgame. This anomalous event alerts the Time Variance Authority who capture this Loki variant in order to maintain their sacred timeline. Shenanigans ensue leading to an unlikely team up between this Loki variant and a lady Loki variant named Sylvie. Now, these two idiots end up going on a journey to the Citadel at the end of time, which leads to the total destruction of the sacred timeline, plunging the Marvel Cinematic Universe into total chaos. Is Loki getting a season two? Yes, Loki will have a season two, and all of this is leading up to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, which I'm really excited about. But first, we gotta get through the Shang-Chi movie. Then we gotta get through the Eternals movie. Who cares? Not me. And then we gotta get through Spider-Man No Way Home, which I can only assume is a tie-in because A, Doctor Strange is in it, and B, we've got multiverse shenanigans going on, and all of that is because we have this weird custody battle going on between Sony and Disney over the rights to who has Spider-Man. And because of this, we've got Jamie Foxx coming back to reprise his role as Electro. Like, who, like, nobody wants that. Like, he was terrible. But on the flip side, we do have Alfred Molina coming back to reprise his role as Dr. Octopus, who I'm like, oh, I have such a crush. I love him. I'm so excited. What about Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield? Are they coming back too? I'm not sure. There's a lot of rumors going around. Maybe they will be, maybe they won't be. But if they are in it and they are having other Spider-Men come back, I would love to see a cameo for the voice actor, Christopher Daniel Barnes from the 90s cartoon series. That was my introduction to Spider-Man. I think he's so great. So let's hope Disney uh, puts him in there and gives him some love. Also, side note, I really love the real life romance between Zendaya and Tom Holland. So you got, you know, Mary Jane and Spider-Man, they like have like a, a real thing going on. And I just think they're so cute together. Like I totally love it. Excuse me, excuse me. That relationship is just a publicity stunt. Yeah, you're totally falling for some Hollywood crap. Hey trolls, what's up? The Loki show sucks. Yeah, we pirated it and it's stupid as fuck. Time cops with glow sticks? Dumb! Yeah, they can't prune Sylvie, but they've pruned like Thanos variants. Why are they kidnapping variants to work for the TVA? Just make some robots or something! Yeah, and why are there statues of the stupid ass timekeepers in Kang's castle if the timekeepers don't even fucking exist? Sylvie, who can't beat like three guys with glow sticks, can beat a smoke dragon? But like a prune Doctor Strange variant couldn't? Yeah, and I'm supposed to believe that they brought Hulk variants into a court system? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like any of the Avengers for that matter? No way. Lazy. Yeah, what do you think about that? Yeah, well, 
What about the fact that we never saw Agent Mobius on a fucking jet ski? I mean, they set it up, and for what? Like, the show sets up all these really fun, cool things, and then we just blow past them. It's like, slow down, guys. I thought the whole point of a show was to slow down. We got 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. Netflix is over here doing the opposite. They're like, taking two episodes, turning into 10 episodes. Wait, what? Yeah. And in the first two episodes, the show sets up these like really deep, interesting themes about repeating patterns and redemption mm. and learning from your mistakes. And then they don't do anything with that either. They just end up nerfing the motherfucking god of mischief into some dour man in a tie by the end of it. Ooh, I don't like that. And he who remains acting at the end was like total cringe. I was having the hardest time watching him. I was like, oh no, they should have cast like an actual honest to God weirdo. Someone like Kanye West or Tyler the Creator or Donald Glover. And King the Conqueror, he is not gonna be the new big bad. That guy sucks. Like call me when Galactus shows up. I hate Kanye West. Isn't Donald Glover already in Spider-Man? And like, let's talk about Sylvie for a minute. Why the fuck is she blonde? Because her character is a hybrid of Loki and Sylvie the Enchantress from the comics. Duh. Look, I don't give a shit. She should at the very least look like Tom Hiddleston a little bit or just, just give her some dark hair. I'll take some dark hair because that would accentuate the narcissism of their romance because Lokis are inherently narcissists. That's too incestuous for the mainstream. Yeah, your Alabama is showing right now. <laughs> Look, I know I'm not the only one who wants to see two hot Lokis making out on screen. And instead we get some tepid zero chemistry kiss with some blonde lady who's got a bad attitude. And like, I got another question for you. Where's the titties? The lady Loki I know is like a tits out bitch. And you want to know why? Uh, why? Because titties are like one of the top mischief makers mm. on the entire planet. Sylvie is not the goddess of mischief. She is a no fun mommy. Oh my God, yes. Sylvie is 100% a no fun mommy. Hey, shut up. You're not supposed to agree with her. But Danica's right. I'm like tired of all the no fun mommies in the Marvel Universe. There's only so many strong female characters a man can take, babe. Excuse me? Excuse me? You're calling her Danica now? You don't know what I can take? This bullshit! You're being such a simp right now, it's disgusting! I'm fucking out of here! Uh... Is everything okay up there, troll? Yeah, she's probably just on a rag or something, don't worry okay, about it. Um, <laughs> anyways, it's totally bizarre to me how Marvel is like 100% down to cater to the female eye. They're like, check out Chris Evans' tits. Like, look at his biceps. Here's Thor. Just, oh, you're not yeah. into muscles? They're on steroids. You've got a hot, sexy Robert Downey Jr. wiggling in his tight ass and these hot little pants. Oh, is he yeah. too old for you? Well, we've yeah. got Peter Parker. Check out his ass. Oh, is no, he too white for you? Oh, we've got Killmonger. Oh, you're into goth yeah. dudes who like to be tied up? Ah, look no, no really. further than Loki. And like, I fucking love it. I'm so here for all of it. But the Marvel ladies aren't doing it for you, huh? No, they're beautiful, but they're not fun and sexy. And growing up and even to today, I just, I see all these female characters in movies and in television shows. And they're always like yeah. cast as these wet blanket, sure. straight men, responsible types. Uh, and it's so boring to yeah, me. So and boring. that's why I love Sweet D from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia oh, yeah, because she's, she's such a piece of shit. She looks like, like a bird. She's just as much of an Ugh. idiot and just as irresponsible as all the guys are. And like, I, it's, I, just, I appreciate it so much seeing that. And then in the DC universe, even though that universe is like totally a mess, I don't know, I at least like they it. have Harley Quinn who's like totally having a good time. Oh, so hot. But but in Marvel, most of the time, the women are like, hey, stop cutting up, boys. Let's get back to work. And don't look at my tits or my ass or you're a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, what tits? There's like no titty allowed in the Marvel Universe. That's true. And it's a real bummer because I love tits. Everybody loves tits <laughs> because it's one of the first things we come in contact with as babies. And like, I've never understood why in media, 
for a woman to be respected, she can't also be sexually objectified in any way. Yeah. Because as Dune taught me, a reverend mother must combine the seductive wiles of a courtesan with the untouchable majesty of a virgin goddess. I don't know what that and means. And that just really works for me. I've been working that angle this whole time. I've built an entire career on being both smart and sexy. Uh -huh. You've got a lot of people sure. online who enjoy my sure video can. work and think it's very intellectually stimulating. And you also have a few people who find me physically stimulating I got the and big head. I'm okay. not mad about it. It's like, thanks for thinking of me. I appreciate you. I feel like Captain Marvel would fly down and rip my dick off if she ever found out I jerked off to her, which I don't because she's scary. Yeah, I mean, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. What the fuck does that mean, mom? It means, Beans, that you will be far more successful in life if you act sweet towards people rather than angry or bitter towards them. In short, if you would be loved, be lovable. I don't know about that. You love me a lot and I'm, I'm fucking mean all the time. I'm such a little bitch. And Sylvie is the latest addition to a long list of no fun Marvel mommies. Yeah, and don't forget that bitchy boss lady Rensler chick, too. Oh Ugh. my god, she is so boring. I totally forgot about her. Like, I give a shit about bureaucrat woman's storyline. Oh my god, she sucks so bad. When she grabbed her little bag and goes on her quest to find free will. Pfft. Yeah, like, who cares? Not me. Uh, anyways, what's, what's your name? Uh, my name? I, uh... I don't have one. You don't have one? Well, do you want one? Cause like, I just, I feel weird just calling you troll. Uh, well, uh, yeah, you could, uh, call me Brock. Yeah. Brock, that's a, that's a great choice. I love it. Brock it is. Hey, yeah, yeah, I'm Brock. Yeah, hey, that's me, I'm Brock. Well, uh, I better go check on my no fun mommy. See you later, right, Danica. Well, good luck with that, I'll see you later. Yeah. See you later, Brock. <laughs> So, you hated the show then? No, I didn't hate the show. There's a lot of stuff that I like about the show and that's why I'm so frustrated because like there's so much cool stuff going on. Like for example, the art direction is really phenomenal. There's like this one little detail in the TVA on the door where they had this pattern and like it looked like an hourglass and an infinity symbol. And I was like, man, that's so smart. And then I also love the color palettes. It was so beautiful, especially when we were on Planet Lamentis. I wish we could have stayed there a little bit longer. Uh, I also really enjoyed the soundtracks, some great music going on. And I really loved seeing all of the other Loki variants, especially President Loki, Kid Loki, and classic Loki, played by Robert E. Grant. I loved him in this role. I just wish we could have gotten more of him, but he was so, what we did get, he was so badass. We just watched him in that pimple movie, How to Get Ahead in Advertising. What a movie, geez. Yeah, that movie is totally bonkers. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, but back to my list. It was great to see Owen Wilson as Agent Mobius. I haven't seen him in anything for a while, so it was nice to see him back in action. Love him. What a little cutie. Uh, also, I'm forever hot for Tom Hiddleston in that wig. He's aging so nicely. He's not all Botoxed out. He's let himself have forehead wrinkles. His hairline's receding a little bit, but I think it's like totally hot. I'm super here for it. And lastly, I enjoyed the multiverse theory. Finally getting into some multiverse stuff in the Marvel Universe. Rick and Morty already did it. They did, and they did it to an 11, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about Marvel's multiverse. So in our last episode about Jerusalem, we discussed our linear perception of time going from the past through the present and into the future. And then we talked about the idea of presentism where the past and the future don't exist. We live in this eternal now moment. And then we also discussed the theory of eternalism, which states that the past, present and future all exist concurrently and eternally. And now Loki is bringing up the idea that there could be parallel alternate timelines or universes. And some scientists believe that this is totally possible. 
Like in that 90s show Sliders? Exactly like that 90s show Sliders where Jerry O'Connell is sliding from one alternate universe to the next to the next to the next. And some people believe that the Mandela effect is proof that there are parallel universes. What's the Mandela effect? The Mandela effect is where you have a large group of people who remember this one fact, but that's wrong and apparently it's something else. Like Nelson Mandela, a lot of people remember him dying in the 80s when in fact he died in 2013. And could this be because CERN fired up their Large Hadron Collider in 2008 and somehow we merged with some parallel timeline where Nelson Mandela didn't die in the 80s and so like now everything's changed? Like personally, I remember the Berenstain Bears, but I guess it's Berenstain Bears and like, what the fuck? And I know that I'm not the only one. There's a lot of people who remember the Berenstain Bears, but psychologists say that like this is some false memory or some distortion and that our brains aren't really great at remembering things, which like, I don't know if I believe that. But... Babe, where are you? I can't believe that fucking traitor. First comic book girl returns to YouTube without robot or space dork. Then she has witch powers. And now this slut is seducing my mans. What the fuck is going on around here? Are you here? so mad about the debt? I mean, Wait comic book girl thing. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. That's it. Danica XIX is a fucking variant! She's a goddamn doppelganger from a parallel timeline who must have replaced the original comic book girl in 2020! That's why she rebranded with that stupid new name and that ugly shaved head! Danica XIX is a fake, fake movie reviewer! What am I gonna do? Babe, hey, you hungry? Come on out, I got some trash. And that's why multiverse theory is totally bunk. Oh, yeah, well. When you say it like that, it's obvious that alternate timelines are totally fake and could never be a reality. Exactly. There's no way that a variant and her cat could travel from a parallel universe to a neighboring timeline and take over the lives of their other selves. Pfft, totally ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, Mom. <laughs> I believe that. That's stupid. <laughs> You'd be a stupid idiot to believe that. So uh, stupid, Beans. Who would believe it? Yeah, that's stupid. Anyways, instead of traveling through the multiverse, let's travel to the super future with God Emperor Dune Club. That's right, we're back. Uh, Dune takes place about 20,000 years from today, and God Emperor Dune takes place about 3,500 years after the events of Children of Dune, where you have Paul's son, Leto Atreides, who's taken over the throne. He's been ruling humanity ever since for thousands of years, He's transformed into this grotesque sandworm guy. He's not getting a lot of dates. He's a super lonely motherfucker until he meets the lovely Huinari, a woman specifically born and bred to woo him by his enemies on Ix. Cut to Atreides tragedy. If you want to join God Emperor Dune Club, I highly recommend you getting this version of the book. There is a link in the description below to pick this up because there are no chapter numbers in Doom. Uh, so check that out. Also, I want to thank everybody who purchased a God Emperor Dune box. Those are sold out, no longer available, but you can still get the pack, which includes all the merch minus the book. You will get a Alito's piece enamel pen, a Dune Club logo metal keychain, and a signed bookmark, God Empress cosplay bookmark, where I'm a sandworm person on it. It's really gross and weird. And also a reading schedule and thank you card. Uh, this is going to be an eight week course. It is tentatively starting on Sunday, August 29th at 3.30 p.m. on twitch.tv slash DanicaXIX. But if you can't make the live sessions, you'll be able to watch them as video on demand on Twitch or here later in the week on YouTube. So get on this sandworm. We're going back to Arrakis, baby. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. And I want to thank all my new fans. Show me so much love in the comments. Thank you guys. We love that bean love. And also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and ring that bell. Support more videos from me and my mom when you join patreon.com slash DanicaXIX, where you can get updates, behind the scenes photos, discount codes on merch, 
dank memes, and participate in polls to decide on what movies we watch together on twitch.tv slash DanicaXIX every Saturday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific Time. What's up, you ugly fucks? Get ready for Brock's Raw Reviews, where we review movies raw dog style. Today on the show, we're talking about Suicide Squad. If you were as bored with the Black Widow movie as I was, you should definitely go out and watch Suicide Squad instead, because this movie has tons of super violent, badass fights, a lot of people die, they're getting like their heads exploded and stuff, it was so cool. Harley Quinn is definitely a fun mommy, she was crazy and hot as usual. Ratcatcher 2, she looked like she just rolled out of a garbage bin, which I'm so into. I loved King Shark. I would totally hang out with that guy any day of the week when he ate all those soldiers. Oh, it was so sick. And then Peacemaker, he dressed like a dork, but I liked that he was willing to take it to the most extreme and he was gonna kill anyone who was in his way. Polka Dot Man, at first I was like, this guy's powers sound really gay. But then, when he blew that starfish's leg off, I was like, whoa, this guy is legit. And Bloodsport. Who doesn't love Bloodsport? What man doesn't love Bloodsport? That character is so cool. I love all of his weapons. He was the best. And, you know, Marvel really just needs to take some notes because now things are, like, their movies are starting to suck and DC's movies are getting better. And you want to know why? Because DC just let James Gunn do whatever he wants and they should talk. What are you doing uh, there? Uh, I'm not doing anything. Uh, I'll be right out. Uh, uh, don't come in here. I'm naked.